hard truth. <coughs> and I was reading today where Jesus said they come in my name, they cast out devils in my name. Yeah, come on. Mighty works. And they did mighty works, they healed the sick, they did wonderful things. Yep. But he said, Depart from me. From me. From me. From me. You workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity. I don't know. Never do. Never do. Never do. Yeah. And he said, he was talking about those who hear his voice. But won't obey his voice. Won't listen to his voice. Won't listen to what he said. And he likened that to a man that built his house on the sand. The sand. He said, if you hear these sayings of mine and you don't do them, you're like a man that builds his house on the sand. Yeah. But he said, if you hear these sayings and do them, you'll be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And when the storms come, and they will come. And when the winds blow, and they will blow. And when the floods beat vehemently against that house, that man's house will stand. It will stand. It will stand. And so, a lot of times in the kingdom of God, we have good intentions, or maybe they're not so good, but we have intentions. And if God isn't directing our footsteps, we could be building on sand. And I felt like a while ago something bumped up against me, and I don't like it when I feel that. I don't like it when I feel that, Brother Pat. No, no, no. And it's not, you know, you. But I know in the spirit what it is. I, I, I know what it is. Hallelujah. And, and so when I know what it is, it, it's a distraction to get my mind off of what God gave me for tonight. Amen. Come on. And so I know what it is. Uh -huh. But I want to help you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Understand what God dealt with me about today. Preach on. And I want to go to Exodus 33 again. <laughs> <laughs> we've been there Sunday night so good. <laughs> and we preached about him hiding us in a safe place yep. yes. in the cleft of the rock and uh, I got a phone call last night after I got home from church and I preached that message again a little bit <laughs> because a lot of times we take up warfare that's not our warfare go ahead it's not our warfare. And, and I don't I don't have time to do that. You don't have time to do that. No. You cannot take up warfare that's not your warfare. That's right. Amen. 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 Truth. So what God gives you to do is your responsibility. And I, I want to talk to you tonight about assignment. <coughs> and I want to talk to you about standing. Because when God gives you an assignment... It's not an assignment that comes from somebody else. That's right. You can't walk in an assignment that somebody else gives you. No, you can't. It has to be a God assignment. If you want to be victorious and you want it to work, it has to be a God assignment. Amen. We don't have time for our assignments. No. We don't. True. Jesus is coming soon. That's He's coming right. back. Amen. And we don't have time for our assignments. I'm not interested, Brother Pat, in an assignment that God didn't give me. I don't, I'm not interested. That's right. It doesn't matter to me. Because if He doesn't give it to me, He's not going to help me do it. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's word. And if He's not going to help me do it, I'm going to fail. Yeah, right. I'm not going to do it. I got help. Come on, yep. So if he's not gonna help me do it, and I'm gonna fail. I don't like failure. I don't. I don't want that deal. I. I don't like failure. 
Now I gotta talk to us tonight. Because in this scripture, and we, we went through this Sunday night, but the Lord asked Moses, said, you know, what do you want me to do? And Moses said, I want to see your glory. And God said to him in verse 21, Behold, there is a place by me. You may have to fast for days and pray for days to get God to talk to you. But it'll be worth it if you hear what He says. All right. And if you know what He wants. Because if He don't want it, then we're wasting our time. Destiny is key. The plan of God is key. What did He say to the disciples? He said, Pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, it's His kingdom, come, thy will, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen? So, God said to Moses, He said, you can't see my face and live, but I'll tell you what you can do. There is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Now, we just talked about this scripture a while ago yeah. where Jesus said they've done all these wonderful works, and I'm, I'm a believer in signs, okay? I'm a believer in healing. I'm a believer in casting out devils. I'm a believer in praying for the sick and them recovering. I'm a believer in speaking with other tongues. I am a believer in signs. If you're a God-called man, woman, a God with a ministry in your life, there should be signs. There should be signs. Following your ministry. But according to the scripture we just talked about, evidently the truth is more important than the signs. All right. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sure. Yes, it does. Amen. Absolutely. So evidently to God, truth is more important than science. Absolutely. I mean, if if we could, we'd all go to the hospital and empty it out, wouldn't yes, we? Yes, we would. Yes, we I'd like to do that. Get everybody out of the nursing home, get everybody out of the hospital, get everybody out of the, you know, out of the gutter and out of the drug drug uh, places in town and just set everybody free. I, I would like to do that. Because yeah. it hurts me when I see people that are hurting and people that are bound up. But at the same time, God is more interested in truth than He is in science. Amen. In fact, He is the truth. Amen. Jesus said this. He said, Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Free. Good. Yes. You know that. Hallelujah. So God is a God of truth. He's not a God of lies. He's not a God of false. I I, I tell you, I don't want to be a false prophet. No. Oh. You know, I I feel sorry for folks that are in that mess because the Bible don't talk too good about them. No gain there. No. Not only that, they got a bad end. Yeah, bad end. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem without all that. So, you know, I, I want to know the truth. And I, I, I'm a firm believer that if we know the truth in the gospel, in the book, then we can, if the Holy Ghost moves on us, yeah. prophesy, speak in tongues, interpret that what comes out of our spirit, because it comes out of a spirit that's full of the truth, yeah. full of the right doctrine, full of the gospel, yeah. Then we can, you know, if if our, we're right and in tune with God, we can pretty much say, you know, that's hey, good, that's God. Absolutely. And really, if we understood prophecy, there's a gift of prophecy that operates in the church, sure. and then there's the office of a prophet. Go ahead. Come on, tell it. And the office of a prophet is in the fivefold ministry: yeah. right. apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yes. 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 So the office of a prophet is in that fivefold ministry. Absolutely. Amen. Preaching the word, teaching the word, bringing forth the word of God to feed the flock of God. So we can have the gift of prophecy through and by the Holy Ghost and not be a prophet. That's right. Amen. Amen. But you cannot be a prophet and not have the gift of prophecy. All right. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Absolutely. Okay. So we don't, we don't want our lives to be scarred by unsound doctrine 
or false prophecy. That's right. We don't want our lives to be scarred by that. And God said to Moses, He said, there is a place that's by me. By me. That sounds like it's pretty close. Good place. <laughs> Standing on a rock. Well, we know that a rock is a type of the Word of God. Y'all yep. yes. believe that? Amen. Amen. Okay. In, in, in fact, I want to go to Matthew chapter 16. And God said, And the Lord, behold, there is a place by me. Thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock. Put me in the cleft of the rock, Lord. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Put me in the cleft, Lord. Do it, Lord. Put me in the Word. Yeah. Put me in there, God, and cover me. Hallelujah. And cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Yeah. So that's where we want to be. If a storm comes, that's where we want to run to. That's where we want to be. We want to actually stay there all the time. We want to be there. Matthew 16. I heard someone say that whenever you get enough of the Word of God and enough truth in you, when you get enough truth in you and you love the truth, it will actually make you angry when you hear lies being produced to people. And I believe that. Uh, I, I, I can work with most folks uh, until they start really saying things about the gospel that are not correct. Amen. And then something inside of me wants to jump up and say, yeah. now wait a minute. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your zeal. I appreciate what you're doing for God, but... But... <laughs> In You're in the error, <laughs> and I don't. Want, I, I, you know, we're not about hurting anybody's feelings. I'm not about hurting anybody. No, it's feelings, and and the Bible tells us to teach the word, preach the word in love. And sometimes the sword of the spirit gets kind of sharp. Yep, that's good. And it cuts sometimes. It does. But you know, it, it the thing hope. that amazes me, Sister Daisy, it, it cuts coming and going. Well, yeah. <laughs> you might not know that, but if you're an anointed man or woman of God and you're preaching under the anointing, hey, and you're not doing just exactly lining up, it'll get you just like it'll get somebody else. Amen. Yes, it will. Amen. Why? Because it's the Word. It's the it's truth. The word. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. And so it seems to me, and maybe we should go over there and read that just to clarify in Matthew chapter 6 what Jesus said. And, and, and I think it would be good to clarify that. Uh, because I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a science person. I like to... I don't follow science. Science should follow me. Yeah. That's right. They should follow me. People should be getting healed and, and getting the Holy Ghost and, and getting saved under my ministry. That should be happening. And uh, so I, I want to go over here to Matthew... I think that's where I read that today, and I didn't write it down. I usually write that down. And I did not write that down today. <laughs> I think it must be 7. Praise God, I think it must be in the wrong chapter. Ah, here we go. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Whoa. Okay. Therefore Jesus went on to explain... And I'm going to take my time because I, I, want, I want you to understand what I'm doing. I, I don't want you to get confused. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. Now, who is a wise man? He that heareth these sayings and doeth them. It's not a hearer of the word that will be blessed, That's right. but the doer. The doer of the word. The doer of the word that will be blessed. 
And he said, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. rock. God said to Moses, there is a place by me. Amen. Stand, Moses, on the rock. On the rock. The truth. He, he didn't say, you know, just get up there and then whenever your friends don't like what you're doing or they don't believe what you believe, get off the rock and fellowship and have all your friends and then whenever you need to, get back on the rock. Right. No, that's not what he said. No. He said, stand on the rock. On the rock. It takes courage in God to, stand on to know rock. that you know that you know that you know what God says yeah. and to stay with it. Amen. Stay with it. Amen. That means you're standing on the rock. Well, the Bible said in one place when he was talking about spiritual warfare and the armor of God, and he said whenever we're in warfare and there's things that come against us and there will be from time to time, sure. things that war against you and what you believe. And he said, stand having done all uh -huh. to stand. Amen. To stand. Amen. Be firm. Have love, but be firm. Yeah. <clears throat> know that you know that you know and be unmovable. Unmovable. He said in verse 26 of Matthew 7, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. I don't like that. Because I like to be, I like wisdom. The Bible said, to seek understanding. Yeah. Seek wisdom. Yeah, get, wisdom. <laughs> get wisdom and get understanding. In all thy getting. Woo! In all thy getting, Pastor. That's right. Get understanding. This is a... <laughs> get understanding. Yes. Sometimes in the gospel we don't understand what we want to understand. But when we find the answer in the Word of God, then we understand. Uh -huh. Amen. And sometimes it's easy to point our finger at someone else when it's not someone else. That's right. It's in here. It's our own messed up spirit. <laughs> it's our own. It's, it's me, oh Lord. It's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Me. And so what we do is, and then it said, and the rain descended, and the floods came, yeah. and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now, it looks to me like that it is very important what happens to us at the end of the race, uh -huh. not just the beginning. It, it, it's not just enough to run and do well today. What's going to happen tomorrow or the following month if Jesus tarries or the following year if Jesus tarries? What's going to happen in our lives if the storm comes, if the winds blow, yeah. if the flood beats against our run house? On, run on, run on. What's going to happen? <laughs> because we are either building. Jesus, it's amazing to me. His father was a carpenter. <laughs> So, obviously, he was skilled in carpentry as well. Yeah, yes, amen. And not only was he skilled in carpentry, Pastor, but he was the creator. Amen. He's always building something. Yeah, he's always building. Jesus is always building. Listen to me. He's always building. Now, there are those folks that like to tear down. Oh, God, yes. But Jesus is building. He's a builder. Yeah. He's a builder. I like that, don't you? Amen. Amen. He's building His church. Yes, He is. In His kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom of God actually is in you. I'm a yeah. Utah. Woo! The kingdom of God is in you. Amen. But in you, God is working on a spiritual house. Ah. How's He doing that? By the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And by the teaching of the Word of God. And as you receive God's Word, and you become a doer of the Word, not just a hearer, That's but a doer, there's a building being built in you. Thank God. Why? Because
Because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God don't leave you out in the street. That's right. He won't leave His Holy Ghost out in the street. He's working on a building in you. A place for Him to dwell. A place of safety for you and your spirit to abide. Amen. So that His spirit and your spirit can abide in the building that God builds in your soul. He's working on... We used to sing a song at our home church. And, and Sister Martha, bless her heart, that brother by Sister Martha going home beat the Lord. And she she wear them spiky heel shoes. Man, I seen I seen uh, I seen them I seen them pretty shoes up here in the eyes. Sister looked over Lisa. I looked over at Teresa and I said, hey, Man, I I like them shoes you got. Lisa. I looked at Lisa, I said, Man, I like them shoes you got on. <laughs> She'd wear them big spiky heel shoes. And she'd get up with her flat top guitar and meet, I mean, there's all kinds of musicians like it is here on the platform. And they'd say, I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord. Sing on. If I was a preacher, I'd be right on preaching and I'd work on a building too. Working on a building. Yeah. <laughs> See, I it, like it, it, it matters to me. I'm an evangelist, so it matters to me what I have built in your life while I'm here. I'm not here to fly through this place. <laughs> And leave and say, hot dog, didn't we have good church? I'm working on a building. <laughs> With a true foundation. <laughs> I'm working on a building. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord. For my Lord. I'm not just here so I can leave and say, man, didn't they shout good? I want to put some seed in your spirit. I want you to have some understanding about God's kingdom. And to know that you can stand on the rock and you can not only stand on the rock, but you can build on the rock. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> so if I do that, then I have to leave some truth in you. That's right. By all means. Matthew 16. I have a lot of friends that don't believe all the truth. I don't know if I know all the truth. I'm sure I don't. We're always learning. We're always learning. That's right. But what I know, I know, I know. Absolutely. <laughs> Does that, did that sound right, Pastor? <laughs> what I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know, I'll find out. And what I don't know, I plan on learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning on learning. Yes, sir. I'm learning. <laughs> Amen. I'm still going to school. Amen. Amen. Church of Jesus. Hallelujah. Me too. Well, an evangelist is part of a fivefold ministry. What's that for? For the perfecting of the saints. For the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity come on. of the faith. Until the fullness of the stature of the perfect man, Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me like Jesus. I'm not here to divide and separate. Thank God for you. That's why you're here. 
You hear your pastor? We don't have everybody here. I'm not here to divide and separate. No. Amen. To bring together. I'm here to bring us together in this kingdom so we can build for God. Gotta have it. Why? Because we need each other. And not only that, but that's the truth of God's word. I, I, I don't I'm not interested in walking in a lie just to make friends. That's right. No, no, no. I'm not interested in that. I've been mean, through that valley of loneliness. Yeah. Cried all them silly tears. Yeah. Felt sorry for myself too many times. Uh -huh. I'm not interested in that no more. No. Done with the pity stuff. Well, thank you, Jesus. All right. <laughs> it's there to it. If I need a whipping, I need a whipping. If I need straightening up, I need straightening up. If I need to get right, I need to get right. Yeah. But I want to walk in the truth. Amen. 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 We talked about Peter a little bit a while ago. Peter was an amazing man. He was, yes, he, he was. was. Peter was an amazing man. I don't never put Peter down. No. He was an amazing man. Quite a man. Sometimes folks kind of miss how important Peter was. They don't quite catch that. But if you read enough about the walk that he had with Jesus and then what happened on the day of Pentecost, right. you find out Peter was a pretty important guy. He was. He was pretty important in the kingdom. I was thinking about this today, Pastor. And some folks, you know, say, well, I want to have a covering. Well, that's great, and you need one. And here's the reason why. Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. And that's the way it works. Well, it yes, it is. That's the way it works. Now, in the flesh, it works that way. And I believe in God's kingdom, it works that way. In the spirit, though, he said this. There's neither male nor female. Well, some people get all that messed up, confused and mixed right. up. And they don't know how to, right. they don't know how to sort all that out. They, divide. Yeah. they can't sort that out. Yeah. Well, if Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of woman, and God is a God of order. Just fashion your seatbelt. If God is a God of order, and you can't have the power of God in your life without having the order of God in your life, right. then guess what? You gotta get right. You gotta get in order. Oh my. True. Hello. Truth. You gotta get in order. See, authority and power and anointing is delegated. It comes down through the head of the church, which is Jesus. And then it comes through the pastor and the fivefold ministry. And then it comes down into the body of Christ, that delegated authority. But if we don't recognize and respect order, now you pray for me, will you? It's true, though. We're out of order. Come on, right. we represent the order. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now see, some people don't want to hear that preached. No, no. Because they get kind of confused about that. But, and I'm going to use Brother Pat, it doesn't matter, it could be Brother Pat or any pastor. He's the head of the house. Sister Daisy's a preacher. She's anointed to preach. And she helps in the services and works in the services and works in the church. And he delegates to her the ability to do that. Yes, he does. Right. Yes, he does. Amen. He's over me. Yes, sir. That's good. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. words. Yes, sir. See, I don't want you to misunderstand. I don't want you to think that I'm some renegade out here. <laughs> And when I go into a church to preach, I'm under that pastor. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. He's the man. And when he says, you obey God, then I have, I'm have i free to obey God. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. But if he says no, I'll sit down shut up. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's getting heavy. Are you are you praying for me? <laughs> he don't want me. <laughs> Cause see, a lot of times folks don't understand that even though we're anointed, that's just the way it works. Yeah, sure it. is. That's just the way it works. So I'm free when he makes me free. And if he starts a service and we know that he allows the Holy Ghost to move here and the Holy Ghost moves on me to do something in another part of the service, I feel free to do that. Absolutely. Because of the liberty he gives. Yes. Absolutely. It's his house. Amen. He's building it. Boy, it's getting quiet in here. Man, I... Bless it quiet. <laughs> Jesus. I know you've heard this before. True. But that's the way it works. Why? Because God is a God of order. <laughs> that's scary, isn't it? Isn't that scary? No. Do you, do you want to have the anointing? Do you want to have power? Do you want to have the real anointing? Do you want to be like Jesus said, building your house on the rock? Do you want to do that? Absolutely. Yeah. I do. Then you got to get in order. Got to get in order. Amen. You absolutely have to get in order. There isn't any other, any way around it. If you come in and Brother Pat says no, we're going to do it this way, and you're hard headed and bull headed, and you say no, I'm going to do it that way, then you're in rebellion. That's right. Right. All right. Sin of witchcraft. Sin of witchcraft. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I know the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I know He's going to help me tonight. Thank you, Lord. I know He'll have to. But I'm trying to help us understand. And a lot of places you go, you have no liberty at all. Right, right. Tell everybody about that. The body of Christ has no liberty at all because it's so structured that yeah. people who have even the gifts in their life can't even operate That's and flow true. in the Holy Ghost. That's true. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's yes, true. Absolutely. You can ask anybody that knows churches and travels or knows anything about the body of Christ that that's true. So when you go in there, it's so structured sometimes that the Holy Ghost is not allowed to do but just certain things and that's all he can yeah, get done. Yeah. He can't get anything else done. That's all he can do. Yeah. God will go to great lengths to get a soul saved in the kingdom. Yes, He will. Yeah. Yeah. He will go to great lengths to win a soul into the kingdom. Amen. But I, I, you know, I want that delegated authority in my life. I don't want to be out of order with God. I, I don't want to do anything that's out of order with the Lord. But your pastor, whoever your pastor is, and there's people here from different churches, but whoever your pastor is, is 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 supposed to be watching out for your soul. Absolutely. And I know I know Brother Pat and Sister Daisy do that, but they're supposed to be watching for your soul. Yes, it's true. Yes. That's the delegated, that is the delegated call of God to a pastor. It is. Absolutely. To watch for those souls. Spend most of your time there. Come on, amen. And you may not agree with everything that's done. That's right. No. But at the same time, if you love them and they're nurturing you, because we gotta be nurtured. We gotta we gotta be fed, we've gotta be we gotta be sheltered, we gotta be watched over, we gotta be taken care of. And so if you're being nurtured, that you can grow up, and, and I know Brother Pat has different ministries come in here. So the reason that you have different ministries come in, everybody's ministry is not the same. No, it ain't. He knows that. And, and pastors know that. Everybody's ministry is not the same. Absolutely. But if the ministry in that person's life is to help you, feed you, train you, put truth in you, and bless you, and that pastor knows, and God's dealing with them to have someone come, then you have to leave that with God. You know, you probably like, uh, there's probably some of you sitting here tonight that like other people's preaching a lot better than mine. Maybe you like mine better than somebody else. I hope you like it enough to come back to the revival. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> but I got to do this tonight because the Lord dealt with me about this. Amen. It's good. God is more interested in truth. Yes, He is. Because if our lives are filled with chaos, something's not right somewhere. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul dealt with the Corinthian church and he said there's envy and strife and division. That's not God. No, right. I'm not a part of that. Nope. 
They said, that's not the Lord. He's, but he went on and said, you, you got gifts. You got things going on. I've seen people prophesy to one another and bust a church wide open. Because somebody thought somebody was more anointed than their pastor. And I'm talking to somebody tonight, so just hang tight. Because somebody thought there was a prophet in the house more anointed than their pastor and that prophet was prophesying to them telling them they were supposed to go three miles down the road and start another church. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yes. Uh-uh. It's out of order. Uh-uh. It's out of order. Absolutely. It is not in the order of God. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I had, you know, I was in a young Christian as a young Christian, just being called into ministry, just teaching a Sunday school class, a young adult class for a few years, and trouble stirred up in the church, and people were moving, and then, uh, here's what happens. One side sits over here, and the other side sits over here. Yeah. This side's mad at that side, that side's mad at that side. <laughs> this side ain't talking about that side, this side ain't talking about that side. They're coming in, they won't shake hands with each other, they won't love each other, they won't hug each other's <laughs> neck. And before you know it, that side's gone, and they're down there, they're down the road somewhere, that whole side's gone. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. And they're down the road fussing and fighting, and before you know it, six, eight months later, they've had another split. And they, you know why? Because a spirit got in. Yeah. I'm about to help us tonight. Because a demon spirit got in. And it was not God. And it was not truth. Come on. Amen. And all it did was bite and devour and bite and devour. The Bible's clear about that. He's clear about that. The Word of God, the rock we're standing on is clear about that. He said the tongue is set on fire of hell. And if you're going around spreading disorder and spreading all kinds of stuff against pastors and against churches, come on, hello, then you need to humble yourself and say, God, I'm out of order. Yes. Amen. I know all pastors aren't right. And I've got enough sense to know that. And I understand what Sister Julie said tonight. She wasn't throwing stones at anybody. No. A lot of times you go into churches and it is as dead in the pulpit as it is in the pews. Yes. That's just part of a ministry that evangelists have to deal with. Have to deal with it. You just yeah. have to deal with it. You have to take the anointing in your soul when you go and you don't look to the left or the right. You just stand on the rock and preach what God gives you to preach. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. But that spirit of division, when it's caused by preachers that want to pull a crowd after them. I'm talking to somebody tonight. And want to pull a crowd after them. Hey, let me tell you something. If you're supposed to be under a shepherd and God has said that's where you're supposed to be, don't you go running around, hey man, after some preacher that's trying to pull you off someplace. Amen. Stay on the rock. I don't. I don't care how good they prophesy. That's right. I don't care how many signs and wonders they got. That's right. I don't care. Come on, Amen. Hello, I, I'm a whole shot now by time. and I'm taking authority tonight over every lying devil in the name of Jesus. I rebuke lies and fornicate lies, son of my spirits. Out of this house in the name of Jesus. That truth will prevail in Jesus' name. Amen. Because if we don't walk in truth, sooner or later, our mind will be in a chaos. Our spirit will be chaotic. He is the peace. He's the God of peace. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto thee. Amen. God gives us peace. Yes, he does. And God does move ministries out of a place sometimes. But you can't leave a place and be mad and tore up and all upset and just have a bad spirit about it. When you leave, you've got to pray through until you know in your heart you're right with God and everything's right between you and people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Usually, a pastor, shepherds know, Shepherds know. 
Come on. Shepherds know. I, I, <laughs> boy, I know, I know, Lord. I know, Jesus. Somebody better be praying for this preacher because, shooey, Jesus. I love everybody. Say, did you ever leave a church? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. But I've never left a church whenever I was in a fallen out place, amen, with a pastor. But when I did, amen, you know what happens? The Holy Ghost send me right back. Make me humble myself. Been there. I know. Make me humble myself and go right back. Oh, goodness. St. Matthew 16. We're moving on. I'm trying to help you. That's good preaching. I am trying to help you. I am trying to help you. Somebody comes up and prophesies to you and says, Doth say the Lord, you're supposed to go down here and go to this church and you're supposed to, and some of you, you know, are not from this church, and I'm not talking to you. But if the Holy Ghost says, you know, you're supposed to go down to this church and you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that, I can't stand it when prophets run around behind pastors' backs and try come in. It just makes me angry, Brother Pat. I'm sorry. But it just absolutely stirs me up and trying to tell people, hey, you can do this, you can do that, you can go here, you can go there, you can do this, you can do that. Whoa! Oh, you better be sure God's leading you. Amen. Be sure God's leading Amen. you. Be sure God's leading you. Matthew 16. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Jesus asked the apostles. Now, I mean, they're following him around. They've been out casting out devils, preaching, amen, healing the sick. And Jesus said unto them, he wants to know, who do you guys think I am? And some of them had said, some say Elias in verse 14, others Jeremiah and one of the prophets. And Jesus said, well, you know, but who do you say? Who do you say I am? It's amazing to me. Peter's the one who came up with the answer. There's a reason Peter came up with the answer. Hmm. There's a reason Peter came up with the answer. Some people read right over this, ignore this, and go right on. But there's a reason why God does things like He does them, Pastor. Because He does them in order. And God had designated Peter to do a job. And so Peter had the answer. And what was the answer? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Okay? When you get revelation from God, there's a reason. There's a reason. God puts it in your spirit to teach you, to train you, to help you. And not only that, to, but to build you up and help you to be established in whatever ministry He's called for you to do. Amen. And so you'll know the truth. Absolutely. And Jesus said to him, Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. My Father revealed this to you. He said, I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build. Oh, here we go again. There that Jesus is building again. There he is building something again. He's building again. Hallelujah. And we're going to close real soon. I didn't realize that late. Amen. But he, here he is. He's building again. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is a builder. He's not about tearing stuff up and wrecking stuff. No, he isn't. No. God help me. He is not about wrecking stuff. Come on. He is the what Paul said of himself. I am a wise master builder. He said, I'm building on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. It matters what you believe. It matters what I believe. It matters what you preach. It matters what you teach. You can't jump back and forth from one belief to another and expect to be established in God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I will give unto thee the keys 
Man, you want keys to loosen, keys to bind. Man, if you want keys to loosen, keys to bind, you got to get in the order of God and you got to walk on man in the Word of God and stay on the rock. Amen. Amen. He said, Whatsoever thou shalt bind on her shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on her shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Okay. So here he is. He's talking to Peter. He said, Peter, on this rock I'll build my church. Build my church. I'm going to build my church, Peter. This is before the day of Pentecost. This is before the Holy Ghost came. That's right. They didn't understand the concept of what a church was going to be. That's right. They didn't understand it. They knew Jewish religion. They knew Jewish regulation. They knew Jewish uh, 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 all of the offering of the sacrifices and going to the tabernacle and all that. They did not comprehend, amen, what Jesus was talking about. Before he ascended to the Father the last time, he looked at the disciples and he said, you go, you tarry in Jerusalem until you're in due with power from on high. Now some of them might have said, well, I don't have to do that. I know enough about God. I'm just going to go preach. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. People do it today too. I don't know if that's really going to happen. Oh, yes, that's God, God. That's really, that's really, help me Lord. That's wonderful. I'll take that one time. But no, Peter and the other apostles went to the upper room and took the women and children with them. Amen. And there they were in the upper room. The Bible said about 120 of them were up there. And guess who stepped out of the crowd again? Peter. Peter. He said, hey, boys, Judas denied the Lord, and we need another apostle here. Twelve tribes of Israel, we need twelve. We need another apostle. So why don't we just draw lots and find out whether it's Matthias or this other, I can't remember his name, but anyway, let's just find out who the apostle God has chosen to take Judas's place. So that's what they did. So now they got twelve apostles again. So here they are, they're praying, they're seeking God. And I guess according to, you know, the time frame and everything, they were up there about ten days praying and seeking the Lord. I guess John, James and John probably figured out by that time there wasn't going to be one on the right hand and the other on the left. Yeah. They probably figured that out by that time. <laughs> by the time they probably decided, okay, Lord, it don't matter if I'm on the left hand or the right hand. <laughs> I just need whatever it is you got for me because I can't go preach without it. Whatever it is I need, God, just give it to me because I can't get out there and preach without it. You know, and they're, they're probably they're probably saying, "Okay, boys, you know, I, you know, we may not agreed on everything, but now let's just let's just care about, let's just love one another, let's just help each other." Amen. Yeah, Amen. the Bible said they were in one mind and one accord, so I guess they did. Absolutely, Amen. they were in one mind and one accord. Hey, they know, they know, they can't go raise the dead. Jesus already ascended; he's already in heaven. They can't go raise the dead. What am I going to raise the dead with? Uh -oh. So the Holy Ghost fell. Tongues of fire set on each of them. They were filled with the power of God. Hallelujah, God. Why? Because they listened to delegated authority and they obeyed delegated authority. Hallelujah to God. And guess what? When they stepped out of the upper room, guess who stepped out of the crowd again? Here comes Peter stepping out of the crowd again. Hallelujah. Why? Because God designated him when Jesus spoke to him in Matthew 16 and said, I'm going to build my church on the rock of this revelation you've got. Hallelujah to God. And you're my man. And I'm going to have you be a leader. Oh, hey. I got a Makosha. He saw Toma. Hey, Toma, come on, shut down. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. And if you want that delegated power in your life, you will have to come under the headship of that apostleship. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the way. There is another way. There's a place by me, Moses. It's on the rock. What is the rock? The rock is the Word of God. When Peter stepped out of that boat, bless you, folks. I know they have to leave early. When they stepped, when Peter, when Peter saw the Lord, when they was out there in that storm, and they thought they were going to sink, and, and Peter saw Jesus walking to him in the storm, and he said, Lord, if that's you, if, if that's really you, let me, let me walk to you. Let me come to you. Jesus said, Come. Right. Come on out here. 
Guess what? That's the water. He stepped out of that boat. Now, he wasn't walking on the water. Let me tell you what. He wasn't walking on the water. He was walking on the Word. The word. Amen. Come on, amen. Hello, he's walking on the Word. Yeah. He was walking on the Creator's Word. Come. That's what he was stepping on. And when he got to looking at the storm, hallelujah to God, he stepped off the rock yep. into unbelief yes, he did. and began to sink in the waves. And Jesus took a hold of him and pulled him back up. If we don't operate in the Word of God, we're out of order. No, see, don't, don't, now don't come back tomorrow night scared to move in the Holy Ghost because Pastor ain't said you can't move in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Pastor hasn't said you can't move in the Holy Ghost. He's not said that. Come on. <laughs> but I'm trying to help us tonight realize that there is order in the kingdom. There's neither male nor female in the spirit. That's right. Man. But at the same time, God did not elevate women above men. No. Right. You know what happens when that happens? I can tell you what happens when that happens. When women start elevating themselves above men, I'm just a Holy Ghost preacher. That's all I know. Come on. But women, women start elevating themselves above men. You know what happens? And they're in leadership. I can tell you what happens. It attracts lesbian spirits. Now hear me. It'll help you. It'll help you. It attracts homosexual spirits. Okay. Okay. You're right. Okay. Why? Because we're out of order. God is a God of order. And God is a God of truth. Hallelujah. Peter stepped out on the day of Pentecost and preached the gospel to Jews from all nations. They were pricked in their hearts. Yes. They were guilty and they knew they were guilty. They crucified the Lord. How much we do? And they said, what can we do to be saved? What can we do? He said, repent. It's real simple. It's not hard. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We don't have time to preach anymore. No. But I hope that helps you understand that God is a God of order. God is a God of truth. He's a God of love. Man, He loves us when we're so messed up. Did He ever love you when you was messed up? He's loved me when I was so messed up. But He's a God of love. And He don't push us on down when we're down. No. He says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. You must be converted. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And you shall find rest for your soul. Do you need rest tonight for your soul? Hallelujah. Is there anybody in this house and you need rest for your soul? I didn't, you know, I, I, I don't apologize for anything I preached. I'm just sorry that it's so late. But do you need rest for your soul? Is there something in your mind, in your spirit, that you question? Let's stand. Are you saved? Do you know it? Are you walking in truth?